Hello guys, um, I just want to share with you how I've ported my cylinder head. It's from M54 B30 uh, BMW engine. This is my actual first time that um, I did porting on the cylinder head. So I do not have any flow bench or anything so I can show you the, result, the proper results from before and after the porting was done. Basically what I did is I just played it safe, you know, and I cleaned up the ports uh, so they follow some natural curve uh, without too many ridges and sudden changes and stuff. I want to add that the goal here was to make the port more efficient, to make it flow better. Cleaning around the valves hopefully increased the port flow without reducing the port velocity. Digging a lot could in improve uh, port flow but at the cost of the port speed and both are actually very important, especially the exhaust port. If it flows good but the gases escape with slow speed or low velocity, scavenging effect is reduced and as I did not want to mess this up, I did not dig the port too much. Also, the main port is rarely the problem. It's usually around the valves and the valves themselves that are the choke point. So doing some work there could be beneficial without making any sacrifices. Surely more gains could be had with some more porting and cleaning, but as I wanted to play it safe, I stopped at this point. For more uh, work it would be very wise to educate yourself way more than I did or perhaps let some specialized person do it for you. So that's basically it and when it comes to the chamber, I played a little bit with the chamber because uh, same with this ridge at the exhaust port, this here, it was like uh, this at the intake side as well. So this is the exhaust port, you can see that there is ton of the material I've actually removed so the valve can flow uh, from the um, small, va uh, small valve lift because if you lift the, the valve, the intake valve like one or th two, three millimeters, let's say like this, with the stock chamber design, it really cannot flow towards here. It, um, the chamber is really preventing it. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe 10% of the valve is cleared and it can flow more efficiently. And even this base, it looks to me natural that I should remove some material from here because uh, the, the valve is sitting at an angle, you know. So um, if it opens, it's really flowing towards the head, into the head actually. And by removing some material, hopefully at the low valve lift, I did some improvements. Before I did any porting, I've watched a lot, and I mean a lot of uh, YouTube videos uh, from David Vizard. He, uh, he's a great guy and has a ton of experience. Even so, what I did here does not guarantee this is an excellent porting job. I had to take the head off uh, for a head gasket change, which most likely did not uh, fail. But while doing that, I saw an opportunity to do some porting. All the work, apart from skimming the head, I've done myself. So it was pretty cheap and did not cost anything more than uh, like 15 hours or so with some power tools and some hand tools. For the exhaust valves, I've decided to round the top edges just above the seat area for a less turbulent flow. And as for the intake valves, I've done the same, but below the seat area. So that's about it. I would like to make this engine a bit stronger while not breaking the wallet. I would like to remove the supercharger and make it naturally aspirated again with a bit more power to it. 230 crank horsepower is fine, but I believe this engine can give a bit more with a few mods, 
like a good set of uh, exhaust headers, not necessarily expensive ones. Better intake manifold optimized for peak horsepower. Uh, better camshafts like those uh, rig grinds we can find. Um, head porting uh, because uh, those heads flow really bad in comparison to the previous generation heads. Judging the information I found on the internet, you can see the graph yourself. Um, with all those mods, I would hope it would produce about 270 to 280 crank horsepower and at that point I think I would call it a day.